Hello, hi, it's been a while. How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. I hope y'all being safe. COVID is still a thing. So yeah, <laughs> you read the title. We're making Flappy Bird today. You know, the game that makes you go. Uh, I know, such an original idea. Thank you, thank you, never done before. But anyway, the tools we'll be using for this project is Love2D, which is just a game framework or engine, whatever you want to call it, and Lua, because that's the programming language that Love works with. I also mentioned them in my previous video, so if you want, you go check. Actually, no, I'm telling you to go check that out. Now, with that being said, let's code the bitch. All right, to start off simple, we need a player that jumps, or should I say flaps, when the spacebar or whatever key is pressed. I know it's a bird, but to keep it simple for now, we're going to make it a rectangle. Matter of fact, everything will be a rectangle, but after everything is functioning as they should, I will probably draw the assets. But that sounds like a lot of work, so no promises. All right, nice. We got our player and we got it moving. But now we have a minor problem and that is we can go off the screen. So we need to fix that. And let's also create the ground for aesthetics. Now the player will not collide with the ground because we have not added any collision detection yet, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Beautiful. Now all we need are some obstacles and then we should be done. It's only been two minutes. I need to stretch this out. We can't be done that quickly. Uh, yes, we're gonna start working on the pipes now. Alright, perfect. Now we just gotta make the pipes move. To give the illusion that the bird is moving forward, we're gonna make the pipes move backwards. Take it back now, y'all. So all we gotta do is decrease their X positions, let's say 75 pixels per frame. Uh hey, we've got a problem here. Let's try that again. Nope. Houston, we have a problem. Still ain't it. One more time. There we go, we got the pipes moving correctly. But one pair of pipes is pretty boring, so let's add another one. Another one. Now, it's starting to look more like Flappy Bird. But as you can see, I again run out of pipes. Now, I could keep adding and render these pipes, but there's a bit of a problem. Let's say you manage to pass 50 pipes, which I highly doubt. That means I would have to hard code those 50 pipes. Not only that would take a fuck ton amount of time, but it will also take a lot of unnecessary memory. But no need to fear, a solution is here. All we gotta do is check when the pipes have gone past the end of the screen. And when they do, we'll just respond them back to the front. So basically a loop. All right, let's see what we're working with. So this pipe should Okay, all right, no, that that's not how it should go. Um, clearly I did something wrong. Hopefully it gets better, no. Oh my fucking God. Like Brian Kernahan once said, debugging is twice as hard as writing the code in the first place. Therefore, if you write the code as cleverly as possible, you are, by definition, not smart enough to debug it. I honestly have no clue what that means, but it sounds like some deep shit and it gives me motivation. Let's try that again. Easy. Looping. 
complete. Now we will never run out of pipes, meaning the game does not have an ending. I don't think there's even an ending in the original game, but that's besides the point. The next thing to do is to randomize the height of the pipes so it does not stay at a constant height throughout the game because that, that's boring and not challenging at all. And after that, we'll add the scoring, then collision detection, and finally, we'll make the game look pretty so I can show off my artistic skills. You feel me? 2,000 years later. I went along and did the first two tasks. Randomizing the pipes were pretty simple. After a pipe pair gets respawned, the height will automatically be randomized between 54 and 221 pixels. And as for the scoring, would you like me to explain how I- Nah, bro, just go along with the video. All right, I got you, say less. So you got your player and it has an X and Y position. It's located right there. X values increase when you go to the right and Y values increase when you go down. The player also has a width and a height. The same rules also apply for the pipes. To get a score, we need the player to go through the pipes, but we need to say that in a way the computer can understand. And that is the player's X positions need to be greater than the pipe's X position plus its width. And that will happen when the player passes this line. All right, next up is to check when the player is colliding with the pipes. In other words, we need to check when they overlap. We'll use this neat little algorithm called AABB collision detection or axis aligned bounding boxes. It might sound a bit scary, so I'll inform you. So go to Google and type axis aligned bounding boxes. And why don't you look at that? Just free information waiting to be learned. Go knock yourself out. Go get yourself some knowledge. I've made it so that when you hit a pipe, the game will automatically restart. But it looks like all of the functionalities are complete. It's time to get drawing. And with that, ladies and gents, everything is complete. It was hell importing the images into the game, especially the pipes. The only thing I didn't draw was the ground because I, I couldn't be bothered. There would barely be any difference if I did draw it. But anyway, it's time to reveal the final product. Drum roll, please. And voila, it's Flappy Bird. This is some off-brand looking Flappy Bird. This is, we got Flappy Bird at home. Well, it more or less looks and acts the same as the original, right? Oh yeah, I also added sound effects, so I thought I'd, I should mention that. But all in all, this was fun and I enjoyed working on it. And I hope you enjoyed this also. I'll see you again in the next month or two, or three, or four, or five. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.